Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and out-of-the-park fans. Today, I got an out-of-the-park game for you that's based on my Elmwood League. I talked a little bit about this in a video where I discussed how to make a custom league in out-of-the-park with real players. And I will put that in, as an end card um, at the end of the video. But... We are going to play a league that is loosely based on my Elmwood career or my Elmwood um, uh, Stratomatic season. And we are the Providence Grays because it's based on that. So um, we will take a look at, first of all, let's go take a look at the standings, the Elmwood Baseball League standings. And uh, these are the standings. And you can see it's set up the way um, that the league is set up in our um, our play-by-email uh, Stratomatic League. You've got the Western League Northern Division, the Western League Upstate Division, the Island Division, and the Southern, Southern Division. And um, you can see what the standings are right now. A few games have been played. Presently, my Providence Grays are two and two. We've played four games and split them. And uh, you can see that the Caseville Cannons are leading our division right now at 4-0, undefeated on the season. Um, and so what what I did was it was it was I wasn't able to figure out how to take all of the current players in baseball, which our actual um, Elmwood League is comprised of, and put them into a custom uh, out of the park league. So what I did was I made the league with each team being based on a team from history that was roughly equivalent in how they played to the team that they were going to uh, be represented by in Elmwood. So my 2015 Grays are actually the, because um, it says 2015 right there, it's based on the year of, and the team that it was taken from. And so my Grays are actually the 2015 Chicago White Sox. I also tried to consider who the person's favorite team was and Find, try to find a team from history that represented that. The Adams family actually, and strangely, you can see they're 0-4. They are the 1975 Red Sox. So, but the 1975 Red Sox have gotten off to a tough start in this, uh, this new iteration of a league where all these different teams from different seasons are thrown together. Uh, the Painted Posts are usually a very good team uh, in our league, and that they were based on the 2018 Atlanta Braves, because the 2018 Atlanta Braves were pretty good. And the uh, manager of that team is our commissioner, Tom Bunch, and he is a big fan of the Atlanta Braves. So, um, and you can see the Cleveland Comets are 3-1. and one. Uh, they are big Cleveland Indians fans, so that's the 1996 Cleveland Indians that they're being represented by. Um, now I don't remember what all of these teams are. Um, you can see the Bronx Barracudas are 1-3, and three, but they're the 1962 Mets. So it's very interesting that they've won one out of three so far, or one out of four, excuse me. So anyway, we are, that's where we are right now. Um, the Bobtown Perpetrators, they're three and one. They were based on the 2016 Indians who went to the World Series. Um, and they, uh, last year, they actually won the World Series in Elmwood League. So, so you get the idea. So if we go to my grays and we go to the um, team schedule page, you can see that the next game is the Adams Family. So this is essentially going to be similar to, and I want to say similar to because 
the teams are allowed to make trades, and I um, am uh, I, I've set myself up as kind of a quasi GM. I don't manage the budgets or anything like that, but I do approve trades and uh, and go to other teams with trades. And all of these other teams can trade with themselves within the you know amongst themselves. But basically, the season just started, so that it is going to basically end up being like the 2015 White Sox playing the 1975 Red Sox. So uh, you can see that's the next game, so let's get on with that. And I will turn the sound down. This time I also made it so that the sound is not is not reflected in the uh, uh, the screencast matic Let's hope that it sticks to that. So you can see our lineup is going to be uh, Alexi Ramirez, Avisail Garcia in right, Abreu at first, Eaton in center, Cabrera in left, Tyler Flowers at catcher. Uh, Sanchez at second base and um, Salandino at third with Samarja pitching. Jeff Samarja is on the mound for us. He hasn't pitched yet. I don't think. No, he hasn't. Um, and for them, for the uh, Adams family, you've got Rick Burleson at short, Bernie Carbo in left, Freddie Lynn in center, Cecil Koopa at first base, Dwight Evans in right, Dwight Dewey Evans in right, Rico Petroselli at third, Tim Blackwell, the Tim Blackwell at catcher, and uh, Griffin at second base with Dick Pohl pitching. And uh, they, and this is, is it? I believe it is, yes, a pitcher bat league which really our league isn't, but as long as all the teams are the same, I, I guess it really doesn't matter. So there you go. There's the teams. We got Jeff Samarja looking. Yeah, I mean, that looks like Jeff Samarja. Some of these guys, they do look incredibly a lot like the, the player they're supposed to represent. And then some guys, it, they're just generic. So anyway... Burleson is out, and that brings up Bernie Carbo to face Samarja, and it looks like he's going to ground out to second, and that brings up Freddie Lynn. I don't know how much that really looks like Fred Lynn, but he's going to ground out. And so the Adams family goes down one, two, three in the first. And here we are taking on Dick Pohl with Alexi Ramirez. And he's going to walk. I could probably steal with him, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to let him. Got Avasail Garcia. Did he go deep? He did. Home run, two run shot. All right. Nice. So we're ahead already, 2-0. Uh, Jose Abreu. That, looks kind of, that looked kind of like Jose Abreu. And now you got Adam Eaton. Now see, Adam Eaton looks a lot like Adam Eaton. And he is, he's on by air. Nice. Now him I will try to steal. No, I guess I won't. There's only one out. I probably should let Melky Cabrera hit. And they pitched out and got a wild pitch on it. So now I'm definitely letting him hit. And he doubles down the line. Are you kidding me? It's 3 nothing. Remember, this is kind of like the 2015 White Sox who were not that great beating up on the 1975 Red Sox. Tyler Flowers is up. And he's going to fly out to center for the second out. And that brings up Carlos Sanchez. And he is out. 
But we struck for three big runs there in the first inning. And Cecil Cooper, Jeff Samarja against Cecil Cooper. That's a matchup you want to see from history. <laughs> so there's an out. And that brings up Dwight Evans. Dwight Dewey Evans. And see how that guy, that face was just a generic face. Well, not really Dewey Evans. And he had a mustache anyway. Rico Petroselli. Rico Petroselli. Looks like he'll ground out. And that is going to be it. And the Red Sox, well, not the Red Sox. The Adams family, excuse me. Go one, two, three. Dick Pole pitching to Tyler Salandino. And he's going to ground out to third for the first out of the inning. Samarja. Here's Samarja batting. And that brings up Alexi Ramirez. Back to the top of the order, and he rips a hit. That's his second time on base. He walked the first time. So he got a double. Hopefully, Avisail Garcia can get a hit just like he did. I think he did last time. Yeah. He had a home run last time. I don't even need anything. Well, he's going to get on by air. An air by, I think, what is, who, no, it's not Burleson. Griffin. Doug Griffin. So, uh, runners at the corners, two down, big at bat for Abreu. And he's going to hit it up the middle. And we got another run. Or nothing. I don't know. The Adams family's kind of hurting in this league. <laughs> Adam Eaton is up two down and he's going to rip a hit it's five nothing I'm just you know I'm going to go for it because why not right and we made it whoever that was made it so it's five nothing and Melky Cabrera up Dick, they need to get Dick Pole out of there and that's going to be a base hit um, I'm, I'm going to say yes, and I guess it all worked out. I don't know. Kind of the machine froze up there. Oh, no, I guess he was thrown out because we're back in the field and only ahead 5 nothing. So we probably had somebody thrown out on that last play where the computer froze. So Doug Griffin is up, a man who made that co pretty costly error last inning. And he's going to get thrown out, so that's two down. Diego Segui. Oh, yeah, they already did replace the, uh, they already did replace Pole with Diego Segui. And now they're back at the top of the order with Rick Burleson facing Samarja with two down here in the third, and they're down 5 nothing, and that's going to be a base hit, Rick Burleson. Two runners are on, two down. And Bernie Carbo. And Bernie Carbo is going to pop out. That's going to end the inning. So it's 5 nothing Grays over the family right now. And uh, Tyler Flower is up. And he's out. Struck him out. Diego Segui pitching to Carlos Sanchez. And he's out. And uh, Tyler Salandino. And uh, yeah, I like Carlos San Sanchez. Or Yolmer Sanchez, as he was later known. So, Freddie Lynn facing Samarja. Samarja's um, uh, is wired down there, you know, showing where he's, his fatigue is actually still pretty good it's leaving the green and going into the uh, greenish yellow range struck him out that brings up Dwight Dewey Evans gotta wonder when the Adams family is going to get their footing but Evans walks they have a man on with two outs and Petroselli up and Petroselli is going to pop out to Alexi Ramirez end the inning. 
We go to the bottom of the fourth. <laughs> Samarja still out there. Or wait a minute, Samarja. What is he batting? Samarja's batting. And Samarja gave it a ride, too, let me tell you. That brings up Alexi Ramirez. And he strikes out. And that brings up Bob Sale Garcia. And he is out. And you really can't blame this on the fact that the 75 Red Sox played with a DH, and so they're not used to playing without a DH, or they're not a team that was built to play without a DH, because the same thing is true of the 2015 White Sox. Or in this case, the Providence Grays. And that's an out. Um, Doug Griffin. Doug Griffin. Flying out. Let me take a check of the box score. Yeah, he's only allowed one hit. Samarja has only allowed one hit. That is crazy. And uh, pitching to Diego Segui. And that's an out. So they go by the wayside there. And you got Jose Abreu up. And he's going to do a little shallow fly. One away. Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton is going to fly out to center. Two down. Well, the, uh, you know, the Adams family pitching has settled down here. Dick Drago. Dick Drago's out there now. Yeah, he was a no-nonsense dude. Their pitching has settled down, but they've had to go into the bullpen to make it settle down. And we have uh, Samarja still pitching pretty good. He's in the yellow. He's approaching the red, but we're in the sixth. And I'm probably going to push him because we have a five-run lead. Bernie Carbo up. Bernie Carbo. Bernie Carbo gets it over the head of Eaton. So he's going to have a double. Double for the Adams family with Freddie Lynn up. And that's going to be a walk, so there's two on. Okay, maybe I won't push him past the six because he's going to eat up what he's got left just trying to get out of this inning. And if he does get out of this inning. Which I do want him to do, but the Adams family scores a run on that. A double by, I think, Cooper. So Dwight Dewey Evans is up. Five to one, one out. Oh my God, he's getting ripped. All right, I'm going to have to get somebody up. I mean, I didn't think he was going to go to, to hell in a handbasket quite this quickly. Now it's 5-3, so we will... Of course, we don't have anybody that's really rested out there except Nate Jones, so I will get Nate Jones up in the bullpen. Hopefully, though, he can still get out of this inning. So uh, that's an out, two down, 5-3, Blackwell up, and he is definitely headed to red territory. That should be an out, and it is. So we do get out of there. We still have a two-run lead. Um, and Flowers is up at the plate. He struck out. That brings up Carlos Sanchez. And he's out. And that brings up Salandino. Salandino, can he beat it out? He can. Infield hit for Salandino with the pitcher up now, I believe. That's Samarja. We will pinch hit for him. And we are going to pinch hit for him with... Adam LaRoche. And Adam LaRoche is going to be out. So, 
frankly. And Nate Jones is tiring, that's too bad, but we'll put him in anyway. And that's a walk with Yastrzemski. Karol Yastrzemski is pinch hitting. The computer is not playing Karol Yastrzemski every day. And Karol Yastrzemski just tied the game. Pinch hit home run. Unbelievable. All right, maybe I underestimated this Adams fan. There's the first out. Burleson retired. That's going to be a fly out. Two away. And uh, Freddie Lynn. Freddie Lynn. And he's out. Fly out to Salander, pop out to Salandino. So, here we go. I'm going to Alexi Ramirez. Rick Kruger is up. I don't even know who Rick Kruger was. I mean, Rick Kruger was his pitching for the Red Sox. I don't even know who that is. But there's a man on with Abasail Garcia. And he rips a hit and we got two on with no outs. Now, this is a perfect bunt opportunity here, except it's Jose Abreu, and I am not bunting with Jose Abreu. And he's going to pop out to right field. So that brings up Adam Eaton, and now I'm not doing it because there's two outs, or one out. And he rips it through. I'm going to say hold. One out, base is loaded. Key situation here for Melky Cabrera. And Melkman, the Melkman, delivers a grand salami. So now we go up nine to five. Let's see if that's enough for us. And Nate Jones, and the tiring Nate Jones, who by now is surely almost in his red bar. That's two down, and... Yeah, Steve Barr now is pitching for them. Carlos Sanchez. Carlos Sanchez is going to pop out or fly out to left field. 9-5, yeah, you can see Nate Jones. is He's approaching the red bar. Let's see if he can get it. Oh, he struck a guy out with uh, being tired. And yes, a great play out there by uh, by Garcia. Awesome. I really want to get um, Nate Jones through this inning. Uh, that is going to be a long fly ball, and he does get out of the inning. Three batters, no less. So you got Salandino up, and yes, I will. Well, I am after the next batter. I'm going to put. Get some activity in the bullpen. They walk Salandino because they know that Nate Jones is up. But did you not think I was going to pinch hit for Nate Jones? I mean, I'm just asking if you thought that. We'll, uh, let's see. I'll get Dan Jennings up in the bullpen. And we will pinch hit for Nate Jones with Trace Thompson. I like Trace Thompson. I don't even know what ever happened to that guy. But anyway. And he walks. So the first two guys are on with no outs. And this is Bill Lee. Bill Spaceman Lee. Facing Alexi Ramirez. He's going through the bullpen like it's going out of style. And that's going to be another run. For Providence. Laying it on. So it's 10 to 5 and Avasail up. And that's going to be a base hit and another couple of runs. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to try to 
Did we get it? I think we got it. Yeah, we did, because there's no outs still. All right, finally an out. I mean, because, you know, um, dude I got warming up is probably going to get tired if we stay up and bat too long. Eaton flies out. That's two down. And Cabrera is up. And we're up 12-5 here. And that's going to be another hit. And it might be another run. No, it won't be. That brings up Tyler Flowers. This has just been really the Providence day. And the bases are loaded for Carlos Sanchez. And they, they got a wild pitch. And that brings in another run, and it's 13-5. Sanchez still up, and he's out. So finally, that comes to an end. And Dan Jennings will replace Nate Joe. And that is a strikeout. Brings up Doug Griffin. <clears throat> Doug Griffin strikes out. So Dan Jennings bringing the heat. And that brings up Carlton Fisk. Pinch hitting Carlton Fisk. Not playing, not starting. But he's out. So that's it. We won 13 to 5. We'll take a look at the box scores. I mean, look at this, man. Flowers didn't have a hit. Neither did Samarja, but you could cut him some slack. And Sanchez didn't. So the only regulars who didn't have a hit for our Providence Grays were um, Sanchez and Flowers. Everyone else had at least one hit. And Garcia was was three for five. Cabrera was, um, or wait, Garcia. Yeah, Garcia was three for five. Cabrera was four for five. But the, um, the Red Sox only had a total of five hits. They were five for 32 at the plate. And look at all those pitchers the Red Sox used. We had some margin go six, give up four hits and three earned runs. And then uh, Jones, with the win and the blown save, went two innings and allowed two earned runs. And then Dan Jennings pitched an inning, a clean inning where he struck out two guys. But man, they used Pole, Segui, Drago, Kruger, Barr, Lee, and Burton. So, and I got a whole bunch of awards for that one. So, anyway, let's go back to the uh, standings. You can see the uh, Adams family, 0-5, rough start for the 1975 Red Sox-based Adams family. While our Providence Grays are 3-2, and 3-2, and, and then I'll say finish today. Yeah, 3-2, and two, but still two games behind Caseville. That's where that puts us. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be doing more in the future uh, of the out of the park based on our Stratomatic Elmwood League. But for right now, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.